Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going deep into what a data structure is. If you're following my last video, I was giving a pretty much an overview on how to get good at Lead Code, and I said you should spend at least a month learning data structures, but I didn't really get deep into what a data structure is. So in this video, we're doing just that. We're I'm going to be explaining what a data structure is and just going to try to talk about it for as long as possible and just give as much information I know about it as possible. So so what exactly is a data structure? I think I, I want to start this by talking about like what even is a structure? Like let's not talk about computers, let's not talk about anything. Like what's a structure? So in the real world. So in a real world, the term structure broadly refers to anything that is organized or arranged in a specific way to serve a purpose, right? If you have a building that's an apartment building, what is that structure? It's a structure that's organized and arranges people to live in like a place and it's like optimized for storing like 20, 30 people in one place um, for the least amount of cost. Um, or maybe not the least amount of cost, but yeah, it's a structure to store people. So yeah, a structure is just anything where you that's organizing or arranged in a specific way to serve a purpose. And that's pretty much exactly what a data structure is. A data structure is just a structure. It arranges and organizes things but what it's organizing or arranging is data in a computer. So that's why it's mostly just referred to in computer science. But yeah, um, data structures help us organize, arrange data, helps us retrieve data, helps us operate on data. So yeah, that's a simple definition of what a data structure is. It's just a structure. Think of a real, wo real world structure. And then, but this structure specifically is for data. Right. So one thing about data structures is choosing the right data structure can make a huge difference in, in the performance and efficiency of your program or algorithm. And I'll give like an example of that right now. So pretend I have this list of this is just a, a, a list of like some of my friends and pretend I wanted to store this data in a data structure and I wanted to store this data. And I want to be able to easily look up who my friends are. And I also want to look up like if somebody is my friend. Maybe I have a long list of friends and I just forget their na the names of some of my friends. Um, and I just want to be, if I want to, if I want to quickly check like, um, is, is Keith my friend right here? Right. So pretend I want to check if Keith's my friend, maybe I want to check if James is my friend, maybe I want to check if John's my friend. What's like one data structure that you can hold this on is just a simple array or a simple list, right? So that's essentially what I'm doing here. I'm storing all my friends in just this list. But as I mentioned, choosing the right data structure can make a huge difference in the performance of your algorithm. What if I told you the most efficient way to store your friends is not in a list like this, but actually in a prefix tree like this, right? You might be thinking, if you've never seen a prefix tree, why that's so complicated. Why would I store my friends in a prefix tree like that? And the main thing, the, the main reason, like these are both different data structures. One is an array and one is a prefix tree. And like I mentioned before, they're just structures that store data and allow you to operate and retrieve data. So it's actually more efficient to use this prefix tree to store all of my friends um, because lookups are faster. And the space complexity is also like it, you can store a lot more friends with less space. So for example, let's talk about the space example. When I have a list of friends, I'm literally storing J like three different times. But here I just store J once, right? If I want to look for, for Keith, for example, if I want to look for my friend Keith, I pretty much go from the root. I see if there's a K. If, if there's any element to K, obviously there's not. So I know right away that Keith is not my friend. I don't have to look at each element and compare like 
each element against like eat like Keith against each element in this array to figure out if Keith is in, if is my friend or not right so lookups are way faster so that's exactly like the power of a data structure and an algorithm or just sorry that that's the power of a data structure um like depending on if you use the right data structure for the job you can substantially increase the performance and efficiency of your program that's just one example of like um yeah a data structure and let's get back into it um that's my example on the prefix tree. And now I'm just going to go over a list of data structures in Python. Depending on the programming language you use, you might have some of these data structures. You might have different data structures built in. And Python is nice enough to give us some data structures, but sometimes you have to build your own data structures. So I'll just literally list out all the data structures that I think are important. So um, depending on the programming language, you can just use a built-in data structure. Or like you might have to build your own in the in the middle of interview, which is not usually optimal. But that's um, I mean that's why they interview you. They want to see if you can build data structures sometimes. So um, let's get into the built-in types. So in Python, the the built-in types are like strings. So strings are just an a, a, pretty much like a an array of characters. Then we have arrays and list. These are just like if you're familiar. Most people who start programming are already familiar with arrays so these you can like add to the end of a list you can like remove from the end of the list it just stores continuous data like I showed up there for my list of friends tuples are kind of an array but but they're immutable so they usually store like you usually define the set the, the set size of the tuple and then you can't change it that that like gives a the extra bonus that they're they become hashable Tuples, you can hash hash them. You can store them as, as the key to a hash table. Dictionaries. Dictionaries is like the famous hash table. If you see in a lot of computer science meme memes on interviews, you'll see that people just throw hash tables at everything. And um, dictionaries in Python are, are, are pretty much implementations of hash tables under the hood. Then you have sets, which is essentially like, uh, it's also like a hash table. Um, yeah. Set, sets are pretty, you can implement a set using using a hash table. It's pretty much the same thing. The main difference between a dictionary and a set is a set is just like a set of values, while dictionaries have um, like a key and a value. So it, you, you map a key to a specific value. Then we have stacks and queues. Um, I'll be explaining these di in different videos, but these are very common um, data structures. I'm more just gonna show you all the data structures so you can start looking into each one and you just have a, like you don't, you, you start to know what you don't know. Like if I, if I see a heap and I was, oh, now you know what a heap is and now you don't know, now you know that you don't know what a heap is and that's pretty important and pretty powerful. So there's stacks, there's queues and there's heaps. These are what's built into Python um, some of these are built into the standard library, and some of them you have to import another library. Like for a queue, you have to import collections. For heaps, you have to import heap queue. So these are, but the, but you, you you can import it from the standard library, I think. Um, but like pretend you have to build a graph, you have to build a tree. Now you actually have to build your own, and I'll make videos on how to build like all of these different data structures so that you see examples on it. But I'll just list them out now. Like, if you're using Python, if you have a graph question, you have you're gonna have to build your own graph. Sorry about that. Um, if you have a tree question, you'll have to build your own tree. And these kind of fall all under tree. Sorry, let me do this. So yeah, you'll have trees, and under trees there are binary trees. There's binary search trees. There's B trees, and B trees are very powerful. They power power a lot of our databases. Um, if you don't know what a B tree is, go look it up. Especially if you're an experienced engineer, go look that up because it's very important. Um, prefix trees is the one that I showed right now that really stores dictionary or like list of words really well. Um, link lists, then different types of link lists: singly link lists, doubly link lists, and then also a Disjoint set, which is a union find, that's very important and can solve a lot of different complicated problems. Like 
I found myself solving some very complicated LeetCode hard questions having to use union find that you wouldn't be able to solve with just all these other data structures. So yeah, that's kind of the list of data structures that you should actually study. I'm just going to like pause right there so you can get a screenshot of that or, or just read it yourself one time over. Um, like I mentioned, there's built-in Python data structures that you could just use like arrays and strings, dictionaries, sets. That's already done for you. But if you like some of them of the data structures, you have to build your own like graphs, trees, link list, um, union find disjoint sets. Um, you have to build those on your own. So cool. Um, yeah, I think probably that's like a high level of what a data structure is like ba basically I'll just reiterate a data structure. Pretty much what it is, is just a structure that holds data. Like if you just remember the definition of a structure, it's structure is something that organizes things to serve a specific purpose. And with a data structure, it's just organizing data to like optimize for a specific purpose. And yeah, um, I'm introduce you a ton of different data structures so you can figure out which ones to use um, for, for the job. All of these have their trade-offs, like will I use an array or a prefix tree? Will I use a dictionary or a stack? Like that's things that you get to learn after you learn these data structures and you learn all the operations on these data structures. Um, and then let's just dive deeper into like one specific like here's the implementation of a stack. So I, like my brother was asking me um, what what a class is. He's just learning Python for the first time and he's just like wondering what a class is. And um, pretty much a class, a, a, a class is a good way to also like wrap your data structures or, or create the create the blueprint for your data structure. A class is an object. A, a class is pretty much specific to object orienting programming. So in object oriented programming, you could create classes and classes are the blueprints to something. And then you could instantiate those blueprints into objects. And then those objects become, yeah, just pretty much objects. But it basically, when you instantiate a class, it takes like that blueprint and creates an object using that blueprint. And if you're working with data structures and you're building data structures in object oriented programming language, you're going to want to define your data structure in a class, right? So here you could see um, what a stack data structure looks like. Right now, we're just de defining the class. So we're just defining the blueprint of that data structure. We're saying this is what a data, sh this is what a stack is. Like underneath the stack, for some reason, they, they have a, they have a queue, but with a stack, you could actually just implement that with a regular array. And then these are the operations that you can push or that you can do on that stack. So basically this is the blueprint for how you organize data, retrieve data and operate on that data. Um, and then after, now that you have a blueprint, you can create instances or objects of that specific class. So for example, when I create a stack right here, this stack is like, it's no longer a bl blueprint. This is a real object that I can work with in, the, in, in my um, program and perform operations on it. Now it actually has a state. When I push one, two, and three onto the stack, it now maintains, like it, it's now a stack with these elements on top of it. Like it is a stack with element one, two, and then three at the very top, right? So pretend I, I like create another stack and called it stack two, right? Stack one, and I called this like stack one and stack two, something like this. Um, let's see, so pretend I have this stack. All right. Pretend I have this stack definition and I, in object oriented programming, I can create a stack right here, stack one. So that, that takes this blueprint of class, of class, which encapsulates all of 
the operations and data of one like it, it, it the class basically defines a blueprint of, of what a stack even is I can create I can create the stack one like one stack I can create a second stack right and I can perform operations on like stack one Okay, see, now, like I have this blueprint of a stack, when I instantiate it, I create an object, and now that object becomes stack one. Then I create another object, and that's stack two. Each of these objects have their own state. Like when I push one and two, that get pushed into stack one. That stack one is different than stack two. But they still have the same operations because they're built from the same blueprint. Like humans, for example, could be defined as a class. Um, we could even be like, yeah, we, we can be defined as a class. Like you can create a blueprint of a human. You can like the human has like in the constructor, you can initialize certain parts of, of the human, like their height, the color of their eyes, their build, their skin color, their eye color. Um, like, yeah, pretty much all of that. And then you could have different operations that can perform on a human. Like, can they walk? Can they talk? Can they jump? Can they eat? Right? And then in your program, you can create different instances of the humans. And then that actually takes the blueprint of the human and creates like a, and creates an instance of that, that human. And now that human, and like depending on the constructor, you can construct them in slightly different ways, but they'll still be built from the same blueprint. So they'll still have the same kind of methods. And now like you'll have different humans in your program and you can make them interact with each other. And it's just a way to just reuse a lot of code and encapsulate data within different um, like objects. And if you don't know what encapsulation is, I'll do a different video on that. That's one of the main benefits of object oriented and just creating this. But I just wanted to quickly also explain what a class was and how it relates to data structures because when you build data structures, you're going to be defining a class that defines the blueprint of that data structure, like pretty much like the stack. I, they built a blueprint of this data structure, and now in their code, now that they could they could just instantiate a stack and then use that stack, like use that data structure. So, yeah, um, probably just going back to the building analogy, like when when the building is is like first being thought of they first create a blueprint of the building right and now once they have the blueprint they know exactly how to build it they build it on paper now when they could actually instantiate or create objects in real life using that same blueprint they can build like a neighborhood with 20 different or 20 houses using the same blueprint and they're all like the same they're all going to look the same because they're using the same blueprint and they're going to behave the same because they're using the same blueprint but they are different objects in different ins instances. Pe different people live in those places. Um, and over time, they'll get used in different ways and eventually they like, diverge. But um, yeah, they're, they're, the blueprint is pretty much like how you define the data structure. And when you instantiate it, now you actually have the data structure and you could operate on the data structure and store data in that data structure. So yeah, um, let's see. Cool. I think I covered all the ground that I wanted to. I want to quickly explain what a data structure is, give the example on how to store my friends. Um, just give you a full list of all the data structures that we even care about. And then, yeah, talk about how you actually define data structures. And usually that's what classes and if you're doing object oriented programming. So hope that was helpful. That's exact. That's my explanation on data structures. If you have any feedback, leave it down below and I'll see you all in the next video.